Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 533, and you too with Bax and Nagel and Rock 102. It's going to be a blustery, cold kind of day. At least that's what Dan Brown said. Uh, sunny and high of 36, but wind gusts of up to 40 miles an hour. It's going to be freaking cold out there. Are your uh, hatches battened down? The hatches uh, have been battened. I don't know about down, maybe yeah. up. Long as, they're in some, do? long as they're in some kind of position. 34 in downtown Springfield. Uh, if you're listening on the uh, podcast later on today, it's all brought to you by Marcotte Ford. They got you back for sales, service, parts, and rentals. Marcotte Ford in Holyoke. Open line Friday today. I am almost 100% convinced we'll do it. Well, we're going to do it. It's, it's whether or not the people can deliver. Like... Good quality products. Well, uh, we've had like one good one the last four tries, so maybe this will be the day where it's a it's an A plus. Everyone gets a star in their forehead kind of thing. You know, like, you ever have like a good streak on Amazon? You're ordering stuff left and right. Bam, bam, bam. Package is coming uh, right on time, and then all of a sudden you order something and you're like, why is this taking three months to get here? It's because it's coming from China. That's kind of the quality of product that we're getting on F- Open Line Friday. It's like uh, people from three months ago are just realizing we're doing this kind of thing, and they just want to hear their own voices. Don't do that. The metaphor is so appropriate. I don't even know what I. I don't even know how to congratulate you. Is it really that appropriate? I'm gonna. It, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that kind of is. Well, I was just trying to think. Because you have now. high expectations, but yet then it's it's you know Chinese manufacturing quality. Thank you for understanding that. That's exactly where I was going with that. I totally got it. Yeah. Bax and Nagel and Rock. Do big name dealerships have your back? No. Does Marcotte Ford and Holyoke? Yes. Why? Because they're a community based Ford dealership that cares. And you'll see why when you walk through the door. Have a seat in the Lug Nuts Cafe and discuss your dream with a member of the Marcotte team. You'll hear everything you want selection, service, which means the start of a relationship with peace of mind for the life of your vehicle. Marcotte thanks the community for having their back and they're ready to have yours. Marcotte Ford, 1025 Main Street, Holyoke. 102. Ah! Ah! Rock 102 Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 549 and Guns N' Roses with Bax and Nagel and Rock 102. I like screaming at 549 in the morning. You know, we don't do enough of that. No. I always, I always uh, there have been times I've woken up at like 3 o'clock in the morning and, you know, screaming. But yeah. that's... Yeah, Listening that's, to that song? No, no, just yeah. uh, just screaming from whatever was going on just minutes before. Uh, very windy today uh, with wind gusts up to 45 miles an hour and a high of 36. It's 34 right now in downtown Springfield. Somehow you still care about what's happening in Hollywood. So from Tinseltown, 3,000 miles away, it's Steve Nagel's Hollywood trash. You know, it's hard to believe that J-Lo would be insecure in her relationship, but yesterday on the Today Show, she admitted that she gets jealous if somebody hits on her man. Uh, what happens if someone hits on her? Does, I guess, does I guess Ben Affleck get uh, jealous? I guess it's okay. She said, quote, don't play with me. Do not play with me. But she added that things won't get physical. Quote, I'm a lover. I'm not a fighter. But I will let them know in a very elegant and ladylike way to step all the way off. Which means she's going to kick somebody's butt. And it won't be so does. ladylike. No, but uh, somebody hitting on her man. She's dating a guy who uh, had sex with his nanny. When he was married to Jennifer Garner. Yeah. Well, I mean. I guess people change. I mean, everyone knows that Ben Affleck is with her. Yeah. He really should be kind of off everybody's table. Because, I mean, you're going to be better than Jennifer Lopez? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think you can beat anybody better than that. You're going to offer him something that she can't provide? I don't think that's true. I don't know. No Uh way. Uh, Bill Skarsgård, who played Pennywise the Clown in the It movies, was busted for marijuana possession in Sweden. He was caught at the airport in Stockholm with 2.43 grams of pot. You know, we tend to forget that it's not legal everywhere. No, it's not. I mean, even though you could, like, you know, walk on the street and smoke a big fat, big fatty right there in the middle of Main Street, doesn't mean you can do it everywhere. I'm actually surprised of all the countries Sweden it's not legal. You would have thought that I would have thought that uh, you know they're very diplomatic over there. I don't know. I think the Swedes have got a problem with the weeds. I guess so. This actually happened back in October, but Bill was sentenced this week. They made him pay a fine of forty thousand dollars Swedish krona, 
which isn't as bad as it sounds. It's only $3,800 uh, dollars for the U.S. That's pretty bad. I wouldn't want to pay that kind of fine. Yeah, but he's... From marijuana uh, possession? He's the clown from It. He's got that clown money. That's I mean, why he needs, to sm- he needs to start smoking that stuff in the gutters. Yeah. I wonder if it, like, uh, when they tried to arrest him, did he take out, like, a big plastic wrench and then pretend like he was pulling the teeth of one of the uh, one of the, the guards there and then yeah. pulled out a big, like, foam tooth? He should leave his weed in his red balloons. He should weed, mm-hmm. leave his weed in his red... Uh, can't say that ten times fast. The uh, Hollywood Reporter uh, has chosen the 50 best TV shows of the 21st century, and I will go through all 42 of them because that's all we have time for. Starting at number 42. Mad Men was number one. Uh, Sopranos was number two. I'll, I'll just do the 10. Succession, number three. 30 Rock, number four. The Wire, number five. Reservation Dogs, number six. Better Call Saul, Number seven and uh, number eight, girls. Number nine, freaks and geeks. And number ten, Bojack Horseman. And Breaking Bad is not in the top ten. Uh, Breaking Bad isn't even on the top fifteen. Came in at number sixteen. Are you kidding 16? me? Sixteen? Really? You know, I listen. I I admit, fully admit, I didn't even watch the show, but I know the, the phenom behind the whole thing. Like that should have been probably uh, Dude, in the top five, just on the acting alone on that show. Yeah, it should be in the top ten. Uh, yeah. You know what? Uh, somebody uh, refer uh, referred to uh, the eighties as what? The late nineteen hundreds. You want to <laughs> you want to talk about feeling old? <laughs> it's not wrong either. No, it's not wrong. I would say the late 20th century sounds a little bit better than, yeah. than the late 1900s. But you know what? I'm, I think I'm going to start adopting that. You know, I've been at this station since the late 1900s. Yeah, yeah. Since the, yeah, yeah, just yeah, since yeah. the turn of the century. <laughs> <laughs> just before the turn of the century, I started here. That's what you can say, All right? Since the turn of the century. And I can say I started here after the turn of the century. <laughs> <laughs> but I was listening to you before the turn of the century. <laughs> Doesn't that make you feel like really old when somebody refers to it like that? It, it does, since we're now uh, well into the 21st oh century. God, yeah, I, and that's the other thing. It's we're 24 years into this whole thing. <laughs> Paul McCartney's uh, long lost. Hofner bass guitar has been called the most important bass in history because it was used in the crea- creation and recordings of dozens of Beatles classics. It was stolen from the back of a van in the Notting Hill area of London back in 1972, but Paul finally got it back thanks to a grassroots campaign called the Lost Bass Project. Uh, members were able to track down... I thought it was bass. No, it's it was a like, bass. like it was fishing. I lost my, I lost my, fa- I lost the fish. I don't think it's hook. I don't think there's anything such thing as a Hofner bass. You don't think so? No, I'm pretty sure it's a bass. Members were able to track down the uh, original thief who led them to the person he sold it to. From there, they traced its journey over the past fifty plus years until it was finally located in the attic of a home on the south coast of England. You know, I don't understand these people who like buy stolen artwork. Yeah. Like, like what are you, what could you possibly do with it other than hide it because somebody knows where it is? You can't show that to anybody. I know people who have bought Hofner bases because because of Paul McCartney. Yeah, never thinking that you know this was actually Paul's actual guitar. Yeah. So I mean, it, it, was the guy who's addict this was even realizing that this was actually Paul's real bass? I don't know. It'd be interesting to find out the whole story of that, though, too. Like, how, it, like, like, oh, it was just sitting in my grandmother's attic. Yeah. Thinking, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just a, just a bass. Just like the one Paul McCartney used to play. No, no. It's the one Paul McCartney used to play. No way. It's sitting up in your attic. It, it, it doesn't, uh, I don't, I don't, it, you could have gotten a lot of money for that. Still could. Yeah, well, no, they Not gave now, it back yeah. to him. He's got it back. Uh, the homeowner didn't even know the history of the... Uh, that's the thing. The homeowner didn't even know. And within days, it was back in Paul's possession, and he's incredibly grateful to have it back. And it needs some minor repairs. It's still complete and has its original case and can be uh, 
can easily be made playable again. Wow, that's fantastic. And uh, Kim Kardashian has reportedly told Kanye West not to let his wife walk around nearly naked when their kids are around. Good advice. Yeah. She must have something to say. Oh, my God, the last time I was that naked was when Ray J. Porky picked the unicorn uvula in that sex tape you can purchase on YouPorn for thirty nine ninety five. dollars <laughs> um, Caitlin? It's like riding a rainbow. It is. Yeah. Well, I never got that done dirty with your mother, Chris Kim, but uh, she was looser than a clown's pocket. It looked like the saggy part of bingo arms. <laughs> what are you trying to say? What I'm trying to say was like waving a stick inside the Mass Mutual Center. <laughs> but I got to tell you, she arrived faster than a hooker in Skechers. <laughs> Memory foam because of her age. <laughs> provides good support. It does. And that is your Hollywood <laughs> trash at Rock 102. Ah! Mattress and shirt. No. And now, Bax's View from the Couch. Brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. Good people. Rock solid service at every Rocky's Ace Hardware. Hey, good morning sports fans. How the heck are you? Folks, remember when Bud Selig was the commissioner of baseball and after 18 years on the job, everyone wondered when the hell that rotten old man was going to retire? I know I certainly did. So when Bud finally stepped down in 2015 at the age of 81, most people were quite relieved. Nine years later, just as Bud is about to turn 90, his replacement Rob Manfred has announced that he is about to retire. Yesterday, the current commissioner of baseball announced that he is uh, that the, 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 the job that he's held on for almost a decade is coming to an end. It might be time to pack it all up and walk away too. After all, Rob Manfred is 65 years old, appears to be in decent health. He's enjoying a big fat paycheck that drags in $17 million a year. At this stage in his life, what does he need this aggravation for? And that is why, after much reflection, he has decided to pass the torch to somebody else. And he will do it once his contract expires in January. January of 2029. Now you may say, Baxi, that's approximately five years away. What kind of guy announces his retirement five years in advance of walking out the door? I'll tell you what kind of fellow announces his plans to retire five years in advance. It's the kind of guy who only has five years left to go. And when that day comes that I only have five years left to go, you can guarantee I'm going to start talking about it. Sadly, I'm still 942 days away from making that sort of announcement, still two and a half years away. And with 2,760 days left to go before I can retire from this godforsaken business, you can damn well be sure I've already got those various calendar-based landmarks already mapped out. So if I were Commissioner Rob Manfred, I would take the next 1,781 days to remind everybody about my impending retirement. That way, five years from now, my sudden retirement will come as a shock to no one. Because I will warn you now, when he does retire, then it'll be my job to let everybody know that my retirement is coming just 986 days after his. So you might want to prepare yourself for that, although I think I've given you plenty of warning. But hey, and of my yappin' sports brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. Join me and Rocky's in celebrating National Bird Feeding Month. Go to Rocky's for a big 40-pound bag of the wild bird food, only 20 bucks. Black oil sunflower seeds, same deal, 20 bucks. Feed your feathered friends with bird food that you bought at Rocky's Ace Hardware. I'm back. That's my view from the couch. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock at 611 and ACDC with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Going to be windy today with a high of uh, 36. Tomorrow, sunny with a high of 34. It is 34 right now in downtown Springfield. You, uh... You fly fairly frequently, right? I use, uh, at least once a year. Yeah. I take a plane trip. Usually. Isn't your, isn't your uh, sister a flight attendant? Uh, yes. Yes, yeah. one, of them are, one of them is. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I would think that uh, you know, she's probably seen a few things in her day on a flight that uh, are unusual, maybe uh, disturbing, possibly gross. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, it I'm happens sure. all the time. Yeah. yeah. I Listen, we've all... We've all been on flights where something bad happens. Maybe not, you know, crashing into the ground, but you know, maybe someone getting unruly or drunk or yeah, what have you. On Tuesday, a Delta Airline Flight 133 departed from Amsterdam, bound for Detroit. But one hour into the flight, the uh, the flight had to be turned back to Amsterdam mm-hmm. after a passenger reported that uh, from the overhead bin above her. On this flight, mm-hmm. uh, dozens of maggots were falling from the overhead bin. <laughs> dozens of That's maggots. Disgusting maggots on a on a plane. I'd almost rather have my Monday through Friday snakes on a plane than a bunch of maggots from the overhead bin. 
Yeah. All right. The story goes is that uh, the flight crew eventually traced the maggots to a passenger's bag, which contained rotten fish wrapped up in a newspaper. Okay. Back up. Beep, beep, beep. Beep, 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 beep. Just hear me out. All right. Uh, Why are you carrying a fish around in your bag? Well, you know, I, I, I can understand it if it were fresh fish. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, one that you you bought, like, at the airport and they packed yeah. it for you. Kind of like they, they do in Boston at Logan. Yeah. Where you can get, like, fresh lobsters, you know, from the airport. Yeah. But if the fish is already wrapped in paper and it's already at the point of rotting to the point where maggots have found their way into your bag yeah that that seems like uh, that wasn't just sitting there for an hour like the guy didn't just pick it up at the amsterdam airport going oh fresh fish Ah, i'd love to take one bag with me yeah this had been sitting in there for quite some time maggots don't usually form for after like a day or two of it sitting there out in the open normally when i'm packing for a trip uh, you know, I want to make sure I got the you know, enough pair of drawers. I got enough, uh, you know, clean socks, a shirt, perhaps. Yeah. I've never said to myself, where did I leave that rotting chunk of fish? Unless this guy was just trying to be an a hole. Well, see, that's kind of yeah. my my thing. This is this has to be like an intentional act. Like somebody wanted to go on a plane and screw around with people. Yeah. Because you don't just collect maggots and put them in your carry-on luggage that's something you check in this is this is exactly why i i don't like checking a bag either because when you check a bag people god knows what people bring with them from their homes Mm -hmm. we're going to talk uh in the news about a a woman from westfield a little bit later on about the living conditions that that, uh, people were subjected to sure the same, you don't know where people come from. And if they have, like, bed bugs or lice or any anything, yeah, they bring that with them in their bag, and now your bag is sitting next to them because you checked in right at the same time, and the bags are smacked together, and then, bam, you got bed bugs as soon as you got uh, you got to your destination. Yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a germaphobe. You know, I, I'm not the, you know, the kind of guy that necessarily judges somebody right away. You know, they, I, I don't start my judgment until, you know, they start acting like they need a judgment. Yeah. But the idea of someone who, like, uh, is sitting next to me on a plane with lice yeah. or, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, they're infested with something or a bad smell. Yeah. I'm always uh, pretty cognizant of that. I don't have much, you know, situational awareness. But if I saw maggots. Yeah. Yeah. Landing on the woman next to me on the plane. That's so disgusting. I would probably ask for a new seat. I would probably ask for a new plane. Well, but when you're already in the, in the air, you don't always have that option. But in this case, they turn the entire plane around to go yeah. back to Amsterdam. You're yeah. an hour into this already. You're, yeah. you know, at that point, you're a thousand miles away. Yeah. I mean, I can't even, I can't even, I can't even imagine what it must be like to be on that plane. Uh, and you got some place to be, like Detroit, and you have to turn around because somebody brought fish rotting in paper with maggots. It's so gross. And so, but did they say anything about the passenger bringing the the, the they, fish on the plane? There's, they've said absolutely not. Uh, they've said absolutely nothing about the person who brought it on the plane, other than they've they've traced the maggots to you know that bag, but they're not saying anything about the person who owned it. That, it's so disgusting. I don't even know why you would do that uh, unless you purposely were trying to be a jerk and making you know a noxious smell within the cabin. And then also, obviously, this thing, again, maggots don't just happen like in a couple of hours. Like even if the guy picked up the fish two hours ago, the maggots aren't going to start until like the next day when the thing is like had the, the time for the bacteria to – it's so gross. It's so gross. Enjoy your breakfast, folks. By the way, uh, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's a that's a whole nother thing. But uh, I would never do that. I would never bring something like that. And, and you're telling me that you can buy lobsters at Logan? Yeah, they'll they'll pack it up and and everything. They pack it up in what dry ice, so you can bring it on the plane with you. Uh, you know, ice packs and a cool and like a like a, a styrofoam cooler. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you can you can get off you know. 
you know, get on the plane with a, with a couple of uh, small lobsters with you. Are you allowed to take that on as your carry-on, or do you have to check that as checked baggage? Uh, well, it, it used, yeah, no, it used to be uh, carry-on. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, I would never, I would never do that now. I mean, yeah. if, there's always some place to find a lobster, but uh, but yeah, you can you can do that. Now, now Delta has no prohibition on bringing aboard perishable food items. That includes fish, as long as there's no violation of agricultural restrictions from the uh, the destination country. Like you know, if you're you're traveling in a foreign country and they you know yeah. and during customs they want to everything that you're bringing on. There should be a restriction for uh, rotting foods, like. It- well, yeah, but you know, when you get the when you get the little customs card that you're supposed to fill out, you know, what are you bringing into this country? Well, I'm bringing a package of rotting fish with yeah, maggots. I'm bringing a dead fish on the plane with me. Oh, okay. Where are you going? Detroit. Okay, I understand now. I'm sorry, sir. You're yeah. gonna have to come with me. You didn't claim your rotting fish with the maggots inside that newspaper. But but my point is, you're going to a place like Detroit. Nobody's going to think twice about, ah, oh, you know what? Get those dead fish out of here. <laughs> smell, we don't want yeah, any dead fish in Amsterdam. The, the smell of rotting perch is the best thing you can hope for. You know, you go to Amsterdam, you think you're going to, you know, you're going to visit the red light district, you visit one of them pot shops mm-hmm. or, or any one, number of those. Uh, don't they have, like, psychedelic drugs you can use, uh, like, in the in all that right. area, too? That's a possibility. And then all of a sudden, uh, of all the things you could have brought back with you, you brought a dead fish. If you... We're in. You're absolutely right. If you were in Amsterdam and your next destination was Detroit, yeah, I think you'd want to go back to Amsterdam rather than your because your final destination is going to be awful. Maybe it was with, a, or with, with or without the rotting fish. Maybe it was a gift for his kids who now have a tag on that says, uh, "My dad went to Amsterdam and all I got was this lousy <laughs> dead rotting fish with maggots." It's six twenty with Bax and Nagel and Rock one hundred two. John Hazen here at Hazen. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock at 626 and Tom Petty with Bax and Nagel at Rock 102. Dan Brown has the full forecast for you, and you're in for a windy day. Let me just preview it that way. Coming up, uh, (laughs) will your hat stay on your head? Find out with Dan Brown. Good. It's good to go with that one. Yeah, it's really good. You got anything there? uh, Um, Let's see. Well, tonight, (laughs) it's uh, it's Free Music Friday. Mm-hmm. At, uh, at MGM Springfield. You're going to be there uh, tonight from 6.30 to 8.30? Yes, I am. That'll be fantastic. And uh, the band tonight is Derek and the Fun Bags, New England's number one undisputed party band. No one has ever disputed that. And you will not dispute it tonight when you go to MGM Springfield. Again, at the MGM Ball, uh, Aria Ballroom, right upstairs. Uh, you, know, you go to the movie theaters, you bang a right, go down the hall, boom, you're right there. Listen, take my advice and get there early because... The room fills up, and then you have to wait outside and wait for people to leave. If you really, so if you really want to go see uh, Derek and the Fun Bags, don't don't delay. Get there on time. Yeah, don't say, "Oh, we'll show up at seven thirty and see what happens." Hey, you're not gonna like what's gonna happen yeah, at seven thirty. No, you're not gonna like. No, now the thing is, there's not a Thunderbirds game going on tonight. No, so. they're out of town. Right, but. Um, Again, it, just precautionary. There wasn't a there wasn't a one when when Aquanet was playing the other a uh, couple of weeks ago too. That was packed. So just be prepared like a Boy Scout. All right, fair All enough. Right? Yes. Now, do you want to laugh? I do. All right. It's Bax and Nagel's joke of the day. I'm funny how I mean funny like I'm a clown. I am usually on Rock 102. I make you laugh. Springfield's <laughs> classic rock. So a soldier runs up to a nun. And out of breath, he says, please, may I hide under your skirt? I'll explain later. So the nun goes, yeah, go ahead. So a moment later, (laughs) two military police ran up and asked, sister, have you seen a soldier? And the nun replied, he went that way. You know, points away. And after the MPs ran off, the soldier crawls out from under her skirt and says, ah, I can't take you enough, sister. You see, I don't want to go to Iraq. And the nun says, I understand completely. And the soldier added, I hope I'm not rude, but you have a great pair of legs. And the nun replies, if you looked a little higher, you would have seen a great pair of nuts, too. I don't want to go to Iraq either. Ah! They're all trying to dodge the draft. He's not a real nun. What what year is this? I don't even know. I don't either. (laughs) Bax and Nagel in the morning on Rock 102, Springfield's classic rock. Here's your Western... 6.26 
631 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's time for news, and it is brought to you by Gary Rome Hunday. Technicians get up to a $5,000 sign-in bonus right now. Learn more at GaryRomeHunday.com slash family. His local radio icon, Steve Nagel. Thanks, Max. The Berkshire District Attorney's Office has confirmed that the human remains discovered on Lennox Mountain during the search for missing woman Susan Lockwood have been positively, positively identified as belonging to her. The search for Lockwood resumed on Friday, February 9th, after a hiker reported finding a hiking boot with evidence of human remains off a trail on Lennox Mountain. Members of the Mass State Police Emergency Response Team and the K-9 Unit joined the uh, search and rescue team over the weekend to search areas in Lennox and Richmond for Susan Lockwood, who has been missing since October 30th of 2023. Crews conducted searches Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday on February 12th. A state police trooper and his canine partner discovered evidence of clothing and human remains at the bottom of a cliff while canvassing the land near a cliff. The officer of the chief medical examiner retrieved a fully intact skull and other remains, subsequently confirming Lockwood's identity through dental records on February 14th. Wow. Yeah, it's uh, it sounds like a case of a hike, a hike that she got injured, yeah. and you know that I mean they'll they'll, they'll get all the details uh, on that through the investigation, but. Sounds just like an like an unfortunate hiking accident. Absolutely, but I mean, <laughs> you know, but they found the remains, so I mean, at least there's some you know, a little bit of closure in this. Yeah, I I would highly recommend taking some kind of GPS device with you if you're going to go out by yourself. Yeah, but you know what? Sometimes, you know, especially if you're talking like you know the Berkshires, you may be in like some remote areas where you're not getting a signal. You 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 perhaps. You know, your phone isn't working correctly. Maybe yeah. the GPS isn't connecting. I mean, you're in a lot of different areas in, in New England where you think, well, that would be a really easy thing to do. And I'm sure, yeah. you know, if you know anything about hiking, that's what you do. Since I get all my information from TikTok now, because that's. Yeah, know, right. Uh, that's the number one news source. Information. Uh, one of the one of the tips were if you were going to be out hiking by yourself and your battery is low on your cell phone. And yeah. You're lost. Leave a voice. Go change your outgoing voicemail before the phone dies, and say, "I'm at this location. Uh, here's my coordinates." Because you can probably find it on your phone before your phone dies. You know, on your Google Maps or something, mm-hmm. and just let everybody. In. So, so that way, uh, the search team can find you if uh, if they were to call you. Yeah, who thinks about doing that? Uh, probably not that many people do, and I, I mean, but this I would, is why I I would survive because I am on the TikToks. The last yeah. time I changed my uh, my voicemail message on my cell phone was about three cell phones ago. Is that what it was three cell phones ago? How long ago was that? Thirty <laughs> years? A long time yeah, ago. A long time ago. How many cell phone numbers have you had? Uh, only one. I've kept the same number. Really? For, uh, wait a minute. Is that right? Two. Really? Two, I take that back. Yeah, no, I but I've had this one for a real long time. I've had uh, two as well. I yeah, had one for the longest time, and uh, that was a Virgin Mobile phone. Virgin they... Mobile. Oh yeah! Wow. Yeah, that was uh, that was the height of my uh, my existence. Was yeah, having the Virgin Mobile. Phone. I think years ago I had something called U.S. Cellular, which uh, Ooh, was bought out you. by somebody, and that was the end of that. Yeah, I don't even. Is Virgin Mobile still around? I don't think I've ever heard, I don't I think I've heard that in years. Yeah, I haven't seen a commercial or anything. Uh, a Holyoke High School teacher is on leave after allegedly linking a comedy video with adult themes to his Google Classroom. Principal Lori McKenna sent an email to families and staff about an investigation that is taking place after a student notified school administrators of the video. I'm writing to let you know that we launched an immediate investigation this afternoon after a student notified school administrators they saw an inappropriate video linked to a teacher's Google Classroom space today. We also took immediate steps to prevent further access to the video, stated McKenna. The, uh, excuse me, (coughs) that time of year. Yeah. Um, The video in question posted on the Hello Holyoke Community Forum on Facebook. Oh, uh, that's a big one. That's where a lot of people complain about that. Shows the teacher, who is a self-identified actor, model, and dancer in a skit uh, titled Actors Anonymous Hotline. In the video, the teacher portrays an adult entertainer who is having intimacy issues with their on-screen and off-screen counterparts. That sounds hilarious. Holyoke official, uh, school officials did not publicly identify the teacher or the status of their employment at this time. According to the email sent out by the principal, They're offering resources and other support for anyone impacted by this particular incident. 
They're asking anyone with any relevant information about this incident to come forward. And that's all we know. <sighs> it's like, you know, good old-fashioned private citizens can't just make good TikToks anymore without some sort of consequence. Isn't that horrible? I know. You know what? Like, I know some people who have, uh, I've read stories, I should say, of some people whose careers were destroyed because they happen to have an OnlyFans page. Yeah, I don't understand that. I don't understand that at all. Hey, you see who's got an OnlyFans page? Who? Rachel Drozdahl. Remember her? Remember She's under a different name now. Yeah, well, okay, so she was the lady who uh, claimed that she was African-American, right? Yes. And then was heading up some kind of group, and then turns out by some revelation she was not African American at all and she but she identified as African American. It right. was this whole big, you know, thing. Well, she was under a different name. She's under a she's now a teacher or was a teacher up until yesterday or 2 days ago. Right. She had an OnlyFans page and the school fired her for having the OnlyFans page. Now, were these uh, provocative peekaboo uh, type well, yeah. of videos? What well, what a smart woman. She has now brought attention to the fact that she's got this OnlyFans page. I bet you there's a bunch of dudes out there that would pay to see that. <sighs> That's the thing. It's 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 because because it's a topical thing and everybody wants to go see. There's there's a certain percentage of the population out there that would go and and buy that. You know, I, I've uh, I I've never in my life have thought. I really need to start paying to see things on Only OnlyFans. Is, is, is that like a generation thing, or is that just me being cheap? It's got to be a generational thing because I don't see. First of all, I would I would never pay for anything like that. You don't pay for porn? What do you? What, what do you? I mean, the so internet. The inter the, yeah, exactly. You'll never yeah. finish all the free stuff. There's free stuff everywhere. You don't need to go pay for it. Yeah, I, I mean, I never understood that. Why would you pay for that? I, I mean, I can't even imagine what's behind the paywall. And that, is it really anything that I can't you, see in front of the paywall? So one time I heard this uh, interview about what is behind the paywall. And apparently, the behind the paywall, it's like for the people who are really into, like, kinks and stuff. Yeah. Like stuff you're not going to normally see on a, on a regular uh, porn-type uh, site. Like, what are they preventing everyone from seeing? There's plenty of filthy stuff on 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 the online for free. Yeah, but I guess it's even better when you're paying for it. Supposedly, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I can't even imagine what I can't even imagine what more the human body can endure that requires me to you know pull out my credit card. You know, I, I, I I'm I'm back to the old ways. I, I'm back to picking up that Sears wish book with the lingerie <laughs> section in it. <laughs> Let the theater of the mind work its magic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, like, I'm going back yeah. to old uh, swimsuit editions of Sports uh, yeah, Illustrated exactly. from 1978. Yeah, the the old good old fo uh, airbrushed photos back in the day. <laughs> yeah, exactly my point. I, I just I don't understand why anybody would pay somebody to to take their clothes off when you could see them for free, like anywhere online. But you clearly they are because just, there are some people on on OnlyFans. That are raking in big ass bucks. So I know who, who are these. It's not. I can't. I'm not even at the point now where I'm asking. Well, who are these people that have their own OnlyFans page? My question is, who are the fans who are paying for it? Who are these people? Uh, yeah. I don't know, so, yeah and why can't I have your login? Why? Yeah. Why can't I have your login? Yeah. yeah well, nobody. Sh everybody's sharing their HBO with me. Their yeah. Netflix. Right. Netflix. Nobody's, like Hulu. Sh oh, nobody, yeah. nobody's sharing an OnlyFans handle. This is an outrage. Yeah. What? What's this greased weasel sixty nine? <laughs> and the password is just rectum. I don't understand. <laughs> A uh, Westfield woman who was charged with two counts of reckless endangerment of a uh, child and eight counts of animal cruelty avoided jail after reaching an agreement with the state to dispose of the case. Last May, officers were called to South Maple Street, of, uh, the home of Tammy Meyer, 36, after a neighbor complained of loud banging coming from the apartment. When no one answered the door, a police dispatcher contacted Meyer, who said there was no one in the apartment but a cat and that her two children were with her. Uh, after responding officers, with the help of the landlord, gained access to the apartment, they immediately called the health department and the city's animal control officer for what was described as terrible conditions. 
Inside the apartment, officers found piles of trash everywhere, and it appeared to be uninhabitable with dried feces and urine littering the floor all across the apartment. Uh, that's according to the uh, statement of facts filed by the investigating officer. Officers then began uh, searching the apartment and found two children, both under 16, hiding in a bedroom that was littered with trash and filth, according to the statement of facts. The children were taken by police to a local hospital and mental health counselors were contacted. As the officers continued searching the apartment, they found a, quote, swarm of bugs gathered at the entrance of the basement, which had an overflowing litter box. Mm. This is uh, this is my example to my kid who wants a cat. <laughs> Do you see what can happen yeah. if you just let it go? Because once upon a time, yeah. this woman asked her parents right. whether she could have a cat. That's right. Officers also found two box turtles, two guinea pigs, a dog, a cat, and a dried out body of a ball python that appeared to have been dead for a long time. <laughs> oh, my God. Ugh. You know, when I hear things like this, I, I look around my cluttered home and I go, it's not so bad here. <laughs> There's nothing dead. There's no, it's not grime. It's, yeah. uh, there, it's just stuff. It's like a book bag. It's yeah, clothes. But, but at least you don't have a dead ball python in yeah, the house. Yeah. Uh, the animal officer on scene said the uh, turtles didn't have food, water, or a heating lamp and appeared to be close to death, according to the statement of facts. The uh, guinea pigs also didn't have uh, food or water, and their cage was full of feces, according to the statement of facts. The surviving animal were uh, living in terrible conditions. The turtles and guinea pigs were taken to Tufts Animal Hospital in Grafton for treatment. In May, Mario was charged with 10 felonies after being arraigned, and she was released on personal recognizance. She returned to district court last week and admitted to that fax in the two counts of reckless endangerment of a child and for five counts of animal cruelty were sufficient for a guilty verdict. There are three of the animal cruelty charges were dismissed at the request of the prosecutors for her admission of the facts remaining in the remaining felonies. The court continued the case without a finding and placed her on probation. Ew. Yes. Ew. Oh, no. Kool-Aid went under the refrigerator. We are going to get ants. Your Pioneer Valley forecast today going to be sunny with a high of 36. Did you have something to add? I was just going to say, I would imagine her uh, customer card at PetSmart's card be revoked. Oh, yeah. Well, you haven't used this in like three years. <laughs> the last purchase was a python. <laughs> where, where did that thing go? <laughs> where is that confounded python? I just thought it was a walking stick. Uh, very windy today with a high of 36 tomorrow. More of the same with a high of 34. It is 34 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Ah, uh, yeah. Springfield's Classic Rock. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock at 651. And Steely Dan with Bax and Nagel at Rock 102. Uh, Going to be windy today with a high of 36 tomorrow. More of the same with a high of 34. It is 34 right now in downtown Springfield. Rock 102 is giving you a chance to go to a Springfield Thunderbird hockey game with Pat Kelly. Enter uh, rock102.com by the end of the day on February 18th, which is what? Uh, Sunday? Sunday. Sunday. That's, that'll be your last chance. Uh, five winners and their guests will join Pat Kelly Friday the 23rd to watch the Thunderbirds take on the Hartford Wolfpack. That'll be a great game, a lot of fun. It's your chance to go to a Thunderbird game with Pat, who knows his way around that place, from Rock 102 Springfield's Classic Rock. Yeah, he knows his way around. He's small. He can get in all the cracks and crevices. Yeah, but he's, he's also the former uh, Thunderbirds PA announcer. Yeah, but nobody remembers him for that. That's the only way people remember him. Um... Do you have anything here? Because I got something to talk about. If you want, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm I'm wide open. Uh, seeing a sign that advertises ice cold beer doesn't seem wrong, does it? No, unless you're, uh, you know, at a middle school band concert. I never had that happen before. <laughs> Although they might want to think about that. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, Gotta but, make it go by a lot faster. But Tennessee wants to make ice cold beer taboo. Two Republican lawmakers have introduced a bill that would ban the sale of refrigerated or cold beer in Tennessee. It's already cleared two hurdles in the state and is now headed to a committee where it will be debated. If it passes this stage, it will head to the final vote. Now, if you're thinking that seems strange, uh, it is trying to tackle an important issue. The goal is to curb drunk driving and reduce deadly crashes involving alcohol. Drinking and driving is already illegal in Tennessee, but open container laws do allow those traveling in vehicles to imbibe. I mm. never understood that. Drinking and driving is illegal only if you're under the influence. 
Here in Massachusetts, if you have an open container of alcohol, that's a violation right. in itself. That just seems kind of dumb that you should have made the open container thing. That should know. be a part of it. Uh, the bill seems pretty vague at this point, at least the version that's been released publicly, but it specifically mentions beer sold at retail. So we're assuming bars, restaurants, and venues could still serve cold beer, like at a restaurant or something like that, but you just can't take the six-pack with you on the way out. You know, anytime I've been to a... Have you ever been to a liquor store? Uh, I used to live in a liquor store. Okay, so then... You, I didn't pay rent. I just... Well, yeah, right, actually, right. I kind of did. I right, was away. all this stuff. Yeah. Well, then follow my logic here on this. Uh, when you go into a liquor store, and whether or not you go to the refrigerated, the refrigerated section or not, there's only a small portion of that store which is dedicated to beer, right? Right. Have you ever noticed the things that are around the store beyond the beer section? There's wine, there's uh, there's liquor, there's yeah. cordials, uh, and none of those are refrigerated. So if I if 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 you're doing something to prevent me from wanting to drink and drive with beer, I got a whole liquor store around me with all kinds of things I can be drinking while I'm driving. Well, some are arguing that the restaurants and the venues and all that other stuff could be a bigger contributor to driving under the influence than the beer sold at the gas stations and the grocery stores and the brewery. Another good point. Uh, the lawmakers are looking to address that, too. They'd like to see the caps on the number of drinks a place will serve when a person can't prove they have a designated driver. Well, this are the laws so antiquated that, like here, you just told me for the celebrity bartending thing, you took a tips course because it's yeah. the, the legal ramifications of letting somebody walk out the door of a venue, even if you didn't serve them. If that, if that was the last place they were at and they came in drunk and they didn't even ask you for for booze you le- they left they get into an accident yeah you're you're still the, liable the for that. uh yeah the process of getting certified was a lot more time consuming and uh, involved than I expected it to be I thought you know 10 minutes you you know give them a, you know a 35 dollar check and you're you know you're ready to go but it's it's it, no it's not like that at all when I when I was uh, when I lived in New Jersey, I remember, like in the bars, you that's that's the package store. That was the place to get the beer. Yeah. So they I don't know if they sold beer in the liquor stores or not. It was one of those kind of things. But I just remember like you could buy a, like a six pack on the way out the door of the bar if you wanted to. Which, right. Which I think promote just promotes drunk driving too. You oil yourself up at the bar. You're looking for more beer. Oh, I'll just take this six pack home with me and finish yeah. it on the way home. Well, not everybody who buys cold beer in a liquor store is looking to drink it on the way home. I mean, a lot of people just do it because they're going to a place where there will be drinking, like at home or a friend's house. I don't know. My dad used to do it all the time. I'm sure your dad did yeah. his road sodas all the time. But he wasn't the only one. I'm t- like, you know, that that's probably a big thing. I. I'm telling you, there's more people driving around drunk all the time. These people w- 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 who who have alcohol problems and things like that, they're down in nips and all that other stuff. You don't think they're driving safely? No, I don't think they're driving safely. <laughs> Adhering to all the rules of the road? And now you can't tell anymore because people are texting on their phones as well. Yeah. So it's... Are you, yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like playing the game, drunk or texting. <laughs> <laughs> it's 657 with Bax and Nangle at Rock 102. Call it. And now, Bax's View from the Couch. Brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. Good people, rock solid service at every Rocky's Ace Hardware. Hey, good morning, sports fans. How the heck are you? Folks, I don't mean to alarm anybody here, but March Madness is less than a full month away. And if you're like me, you're chomping at the bit to get into this year's NCAA brackets. Now, not to brag or nothing, but I would remind everybody that my Marquette Golden Eagles are currently the fourth-ranked team in the country and trail only the UConn Huskies in the Big East. In other words, I'm pretty sure they're going to make the tournament. Sadly, not every overpriced university will be that lucky. Some schools have no shot at being selected, and there are some schools that they can barely get out of the elevator, never mind find their spot on my tourney time brackets. For example... Last night, the college basketball game between the Fairleigh Dickinson Knights and Long Island was delayed by a full 17 minutes. Why? Because apparently several Fairleigh Dickinson players found themselves stuck in an elevator at the Steinberg Wellness Center in Brooklyn, New York. 
According to reports, several players were trapped in the elevator between floors just minutes before they were due on the court for pregame warm-ups. Mind you, they were already in the building and ready to play, but due to the mechanical malfunctions of the elevator, the game had to be delayed. Thankfully, the players were saved by members of the New York City Fire Department who responded within just a matter of minutes. And while that may seem like a quick response, if you've ever been in a claustrophobic situation and you've got somewhere to be, then you might as well have been in there for a few weeks before they dragged you to safety. In other words, and more than $62,000 a year in tuition, room, board, and fees, there's not a single kid on that team that thought about taking the stairs? What kind of education are they giving these kids at Fairleigh Dickinson University? Granted, in the five and a half years that I went to college, I didn't use the university stairways either. But I was a brash, young, non-scholarship bearing student with four full semesters of rigorous academic probation. The expectations of me were never that high. But when you're 17 minutes away from tip-off, it's a totally different story. But hey, and never my yapping, sports brought to you by Rocky's Ace Hardware. Hey, you wear Carhartts? Then you know Carhartts are hardly ever on sale. But right now at Rocky's, you could save 40% on seasonal Carhartt workwear. It's a clearance, so hustle in before they get all the good stuff is, uh, taken out of there. Carhartt clearance, 40% off at Rocky's Ace Hardware. I'm back. So that's my view from the couch. Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 7-11 in Motley Crue with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. It's going to be windy today with a high of 36. Tomorrow, uh, more of the same with a high of 34. It is 33 right now in downtown Springfield. Did you hear that uh, the story that uh, no. that cornflakes was invented by a guy who uh, invented them because something in the cornflakes prevents you from gratifying yourself, like as an anti-masturbatory uh, thing? It's on the internet. You can look it up. What? Yeah. I've never heard that. You've never heard that story? And I would be the kind of person that would hear a story like that. Apparently, that is absolutely true. You can look on the internet. The internet doesn't lie. Of course not. Was it on TikTok? Because if it's not on TikTok, then I, I didn't see I know it. it sounds insane. It sounds crazy. But apparently that was the primary reason why it was invented. Cornflakes. All right. Let's uh, check into this little uh, tidbit you're, I mean, of information. You're, 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 you're so busy eating the cornflakes with the bowl in one hand and the spoon in the other that you can't possibly you know, do what you got to do after you're done. Uh... I'm reading this now. In the United States, one of the oldest anti-masturbation voices was John Harvey Kellogg. Wow, you really opened up a, a can of worms here. I'm telling you. cornflakes. I'm telling you. Uh, anti-masturbation voices was John Harvey Kellogg, a physician and devout Seventh-day Adventist in Battle Creek, Michigan. In addition to running his successful surgery, Kellogg edited Good Health, the church's magazine promoting Adventist beliefs in healthy living, such as adopting a vegetarian diet, abstaining from alcohol, tobacco, caffeine, and getting plenty of fresh air and exercise. Unfortunately, the magazine under Kellogg's leadership uh, espoused <clears throat> eugenics and outdated anthro anthropological notions as well. Right. Yeah, I don't think there's any proof that it works, <laughs> but because uh, although I've you know never had cornflakes and done that at the same time, yeah, yeah, you know, it's just it's just you too much to think about. The well, reason I brought it up, yeah is there's a, there's a new study from the Journal of Exposure Science and Environmental Epidemiology. This came out yesterday. Okay. Four out of five Americans are being exposed, uh, exposed to a little-known chemical found in popular oat-based foods. That includes, like, Cheerios and Quaker Oats. Yeah. This chemical is linked to reduced fertility, altered fetal growth, and delayed puberty. And 80% of Americans are testing positive for uh, this pesticide called uh, chlormaquat. Uh -huh. It's a highly toxic agricultural chemical. It's federally allowed to be used on oats and other grains imported to the United States. And when applied to oat and grain crops, uh, chlormalot, chlormaquat uh, alters the plant's growth, preventing it from bending over and thus making it easier to harvest. Okay. But it's not the only thing that winds up bending over. So right. You take the good and take the bad out of it. So if you're eating like Quaker Oats and Cheerios and you're finding that you can't uh, perform yeah. in certain ways or let's say your your children are undersized, it might be because you've been packing on the uh, the Quaker Oats thing and then it's heart smart food. Oh, I thought it was because I looked like that uh, fat, ugly, nothing Quaker guy on the label. <laughs> well, that's... 
That's possible. That could be it, too. That's possible. Yeah. So there's chemicals in oats that may be uh, making us uh, not fertile. You know what? Think about anything that we eat. It's all filled with, you know, chemicals and things like that. They're saying, like, even the water system is loaded with, you know, you think about uh, when you uh, go to the bathroom, that stuff okay. gets treated at a, at a sewage treatment plant. But they're only taking out the bacteria. They're not taking out all the chemicals that have gone mm-hmm. into the thing. There was there was there was one study I read that uh, sweeteners have been found in in water sources because people are urinating urinating them out, and then it gets into the water system. Right. So yeah, oats is probably not the worst thing that you could be eating. Yeah, and uh, theoretically. Because I mean, there's benefits to it too, but yeah. you know, uh, but ultimately, if the oats are being sprayed with a chemical, a mm-hmm. pesticide, and uh, even when it's being processed in the in the factories that put together like the your oatmeals and cereals and stuff, yeah, there's remnants of those chemicals that are still in the oats. It's it's just part of the plant now because they're all been genetically modified, yeah, to work this way. And yet, how many years have you been hearing that you know, breakfast is not only the most important meal of the day, but you want to start off with a hearty breakfast of juice, toast, milk, and tricks? You know, it's like when you when you really put it all together, you realize this is like a poisonous meal that uh, that I'm putting into my body. It, and by the way, that may account for my my uh, my soft and no longer rigid erections. I was going to say is ED medication now part of a complete breakfast? <laughs> That's why they call it honey nut cheerio. <laughs> Juice toast yeah, milk yeah, and Viagra. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's uh that's that's a little surprising yeah. that uh, that's in our food. But it's not that surprising when you think about food sources and you think about where seeds come from and you think about the genetically modified foods imported wheat we're not we're not growing this stuff out in the Midwest like we, everybody thinks we are. Um, no, it's probably coming from another country. It it probably yeah. is. I mean, we export, but we import too. We we import the same things we export. That that always fascinates me, like how the food supply chain works. Like every, I think most people think that all of your food comes from the United States. No, and a lot of people aren't looking at the labels in the in the in the grocery stores. They're just saying, "Well, there's oranges there. They must be from Florida." No, they're no. from like Mexico, or they're from somewhere else. Well, because there's certain c- fruits and vegetables are seasonal. I mean, there are some fruits that would never grow in the United States in December. I never knew up until a couple of years ago that the orange juice, like the Florida oranges, mm-hmm. like the peak time for that is like right now, like January, February. Is the that's where you get the fr- freshest orange juice, uh, kind of thing. But go try finding that in the grocery store. Oh yeah, good luck. A lot of that stuff isn't even uh, available. And if you, you find it, you're gonna, be, you're gonna pay an arm and a leg for it. Yeah, because it comes in small batches. Yeah, but but again, I think people believe that that, that things come from them like not from far away. You know, you, you, when you talk about, you know, genetically modified food, you know, yeah. a few years ago that the the whole argument about that was a pretty a pretty big one and it's, you know, a pretty pervasive thing. And you 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 talk to a dietitian, you know, stay away from processed foods. Well, try to find something that hasn't been processed. Every meat is processed, yeah. you know, with uh, with chemicals to make sure it stays red. There's dyes in the meat to make sure that it looks appetizing in the uh, in the case and in the package. All your produce has either been genetically modified or you know brought in from an, from another country in, on off season times of the year, and they are all sprayed with the uh, with uh, with chemicals to keep them fresh for a longer period of time. Or the packaging has been sprayed with chemicals to keep these things fresh for a long period of time. It's impossible impossible to avoid processed, processed foods. foods yeah i mean I, even even at the at, at, with the the best intentions it's impossible to find yeah and then you wonder why well why is there a, a, an increase in all these different diseases as a result of this but if you go to a place like autumn mist farm over there in uh, feeding hills that's all natural meat they grow that right on the farm it gets processed processed at a butcher but it's not processed with dyes and all that stuff. It's yeah. farm fresh food. Right. 
that that is harder to find anywhere and, and sometimes if you if you're getting farm fresh grass fed beef in a store and it doesn't look as nice and red as you would yeah. want it's because it hasn't been pumped with a bunch of chemicals in it to <laughs> exactly. make it red. It hasn't been pumped with enough steroids to make it look uh, appetizing in a package. Years ago, I once wrote to a grocery store chain. I won't say which one. What does it rhyme with? Uh, I can't even say that. Nah, I, 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 it's not about I, I wrote them saying, hey, what's the deal with your ground beef? You know, and the ground beef is is red on the outside, but, but then when the, you open it up, it's gray like on the gray inside. Gray on the inside, and uh, it was an explanation of like an oxidation process. You know, they sent me the whole thing. Plus, they sent me uh, one of their little uh, trinkets uh, so I could get a free slice of pizza and a oh. soda. Oh, nice. Don't know where that might be, if you know what I'm saying. But they, they, at least they took the time to write the letter back and and, and say that. Yeah. But it's really. They're just dyes that are added to the meat to make it look better. That's kind of gross. Yeah. But well, you know wasn't what? It, wasn't it that pink slime stuff? Wasn't that uh, part of the thing? Or was that not even real? Was that a not real thing? I think that was debunked. Yeah. And uh, pink slime was not really a, a thing. And it wasn't, and even if it was used, it wasn't used all over the place. But you yeah. know what? Everyone's been lying about you know all the pesticides in the food to begin with. Who do you really believe anymore? Yeah. You know, so, I mean, it, it's when you really go down that rabbit hole, yeah. you know, about you know, about our food supply yeah, and the fact that you're paying, you know, an arm and a leg for it to be poisoned by your Quaker oats. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you really scratch your head and go, well, you know, we none of us can really get ahead on this thing. Yeah. Um, first of all, we're all doomed. I just want to say thank you for uh, bringing uh, some of the most gloomy messages uh, to to the listening audience before <laughs> a long holiday weekend. <laughs> and uh, and also, uh, I want to find out more about this Kellogg guy and the uh, yeah. and the masturbation thing. I'm surprised you don't remember that story. No. Th- that th- that w- they were that was it came out of well, I mean it's been out there for a while, but then it got re-reported just a couple of years ago. Well, I'm, I'm, I have an article in front of me that I'm, I'm about to read after we, after we go through commercial break. Uh, of course, this wouldn't be the first time masturbation and Kellogg has been used <laughs> in the same sentence. <laughs> Zing! Zing! Pow! It's 7:22 at Rock 102. Yeah. GG Inks, Rock 102, Springfield's classic rock. It's 7:28. And BTO with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Dan Brown's got the uh, detailed forecast for you coming up. Uh, hey, next week on Baxi's Musical Podcast, I'm really excited about this. Uh, my longtime friend Cheryl Pavelski, who uh, runs Omnivore Recordings, has just won her fourth Grammy, this time by producing this amazing box set called uh, Written in Their Soul, the Stax Songwriter Box Set. Uh, the the, the Sax uh, Songwriter Demos. It's a, it's a seven CD collection that's taken her 17 years to compile. These are all old demos from the songwriters from Stax Records. Stax Records, you know, release music from everyone from, you know, Otis Redding to Isaac Hayes to you could go on forever. And uh, it's an amazing collection of music. And it won two Grammys, the the one for uh, for Best Historical Record and another one for Album Notes. And Cheryl oversaw all of them. Uh, that's going to be available on Monday, uh, brought to you by Metro Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and Chickamee. And available on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, and rock102.com. It's an excellent uh, interview. I hope you get a chance to listen to it. It's really an interesting story coming up on Monday on Rock 102. A friend of ours uh, posted on Facebook yesterday, uh, you know, one of these uh, interactive uh, type of posts. Yeah. Uh, ruin a movie by replacing the word, placing one word in the title with foreskin. Uh, foreskin brothers, as in step brothers. Sure. Uh, I said foreskin on the river Kwai. That's a good one. Yeah, that's good. Uh, the hand that rocks the foreskin. <laughs> okay. The foreskin games, like yeah. the uh, rumple foreskin. That's a good one. Uh, foreskin burn, like uh, what's that salt burn uh, movie? Uh huh. Yeah. I'm seeing another uh, local uh, radio person saying the longest foreskin. The, yes. Yep. That's another one. Mm-hmm. Young foreskin. Yep. Uh, uh, it's the, a wonderful foreskin. Uh, the the smell of foreskin. That's a good one. <laughs> Merry Christmas, you old uh, movie house. <laughs> um, oh, scent of a foreskin. Right. <laughs> scent of a foreskin. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was. Right. Hoo-ah. 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 I'm surprised. And I'm and the one I put down. I, I can't believe no one else thought of it. I put down Schindler's foreskin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
You I did. Mean, I, 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 well, I just I, ruined the movie. Well, all of the all of the movies are ruined. All you, they're all ruined now. Uh, toy foreskin, you could do. <laughs> you could do. Uh, foreskin flew over the cuckoo's nest. It's a wonderful foreskin. The green foreskin. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, could, it could go on and on oh, and on for days with this. It's seven thirty one, and we have news next. A Rock one hundred two. Here's your Western Mass news first. With Bax and Nagel and Rock one hundred two, it's time for news. Brought to you by Serview Locksmith. They got a key for that. St. James Avenue in Springfield or ServiewLocksmith.com. His local radio icon, Steve Nagel. Thanks, Bax. A man was sentenced in Springfield Federal Courthouse for smuggling uh, Tyan Tien from China and selling it uh, online. What is it? Tian Eptin. I don't even know what that is. What is that? Uh, I believe that's the Asian word for Jeffrey Epstein. I don't believe that's true. Well, it's, uh, it's t- anyway, it's like fake heroin. Oh, oh, or it is. Oh. I don't even know it. According to the Department of Justice, 37 year old Ryan Stabile of Pasadena, California, smuggled Tian Pitin, a highly addictive drug commonly known as gas station heroin from China into the United States. That's the best kind of heroin is the gas station kind. Like your impulse buy heroin. Uh, we were talking about florists the other day. Uh, what are you going to do? Go s- waste your money at a, at a professional florist for Valentine's Day when you can perv- go into a Cumberland Farms and pick up the bouquet that's sitting right there? <laughs> They're just as good. Yeah, and each flower and is individually wrapped. A fraction of the price. Yeah, I, I've never, uh, I didn't know uh, gas station heroin was a was a thing. Well, he imported between 10 and 15 kilos of this uh, per month from a Chinese supplier. Stabile was the owner of Supplements for Work, a company that sold misbranded drug uh, TN patine online. He repack- pe- repackaged it and marketed it through his websites as a mood enhancer and, it, and claimed that it improved cognitive fun- functioning. The, uh, I guess I should... Uh, take that. No, I, I don't think even, you should. I couldn't even get that sentence out of my mouth. The quantities of gas station heroin were sold in 5 gram, uh, 10 gram, and 20 gram quantities for prices between $55 and $175. And uh, Stabile's sales averaged $250,000 a month. Wow. He also said he was selling it for research purposes only, even though he sold it to individuals for personal use. A federal grand jury in California indicted uh, Stabile in November of 2019 on charges of conspiring to smuggle. Uh, while awaiting trial, he continued to sell the Tian Patine uh, online for several years under a different company and website called Ultra Vulgar Festival Drip. <laughs> Ultra Vulgar, Vulgar Festival, Festival Drip. Drip. That sounds like something I would not want near my mouth. Vo- yeah. It- if it were like a you know, pleasant festival drip, would you feel better about it? No, but when I hear something ultra vulgar festival drip, all I can think of is those people in the mud piles out of that Burning Man uh, uh, concert. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, out in the middle of the desert. Uh, Stabil made at least two point two million dollars in sales in September of twenty three. He pleaded guilty to conspiracy and two counts of introduction to misbranded drugs with intent to defraud and mislead in September of 2023. He was sentenced to two years in prison, three years supervised uh, release, and has to pay a forfeiture of $1.8 million. Wow. Wow. That's a gas station heroin. You know, there's a comedian, John Moses... Yeah, that uh, he's actually coming. Uh, uh, he's he's touring. He's going to be coming to MGM. Right, uh, coming to Roar. But uh, he has this TikTok series of gas station uh, erectile dysfunction medicine. <laughs> <laughs> you know the ones that you see on there, and he gives it. He gives it five rubs yeah. for each one. You know, like which one has worked the best. Yeah, like I, like rigid with extra G's. Yeah, I, I know you've been in one of these stores and you see that stuff like manpower or you know something. <laughs> it's something like that to to get you all excited. And I'm like, is anybody really putting this in their mouth? And apparently, apparently there so. are. Yeah. yeah, it's it's selling uh, it's selling enough that it actually it must actually work. Uh, I don't know about that, but, but, you know, how, what kind of emergency situation must you be in where you have to go to the nearest convenience store to buy something like that? Listen, when the mood strikes, the mood strikes, Bax. If you, uh, let's say it's nine o'clock at night. Yeah. There's no doctor open at that time. (laughs) But 
But there is an Easy Mart open, and uh, for just a few bucks, you could be walking out of there as a, like a like a proud sailor. Yeah, yeah, pow or uh, Alaskan Thunder F. <laughs> oh wait, that's weed. I don't know. I, uh, there's a strain of weed out there called Alaskan Alaskan Thunder F. Interesting. I can't believe somebody at a dispensary can look at me directly in the eye with a straight face and say that. I think the first dozen times you say it, you probably giggle, I, yeah, but after yeah. after a while, the the it just becomes, novelty wears off. It just becomes part of the presentation. Like here, this is what we have. Uh, yeah, we're like, having a sale on Alaskan Thunder F. We have uh, sk- uh, Skittles, uh, Jujubees, and uh, Alaskan Thunder F. Oh, I'll take I'll two. I'll take six. <laughs> A Holyoke High School teacher is on leave after allegedly linking a comedy video with adult themes to his Google Classroom. Principal Lori McKenna sent an email to families and staff about an investigation that is taking place after a student notified school administrators of the video. I'm writing to let you know that we launched an immediate investigation this afternoon after a student notified school administrators that they saw an inappropriate video linked to a teacher's Google Classroom space today. We also took immediate steps to prevent further access to that video. The video in question, posted on the Hello Holio community f- forum on Facebook, shows the teacher, who is a self-identified actor, model, and dancer in a skit titled Actors Anonymous Hotline. In the video, the teacher portrays an adult entertainer who is having intimacy issues with their on-screen and off-screen counterparts. Now, doesn't that sound funny already? It sounds hilarious. Oh, the cra- and the crazy situations he finds himself in. Holyoke school officials did not publicly identify the teacher or the status of their employment at this time. According to that email sent out by the principal, they're offering resources and other support for anyone impacted by this particular incident. How bad was it that you need counselors? Um, they don't. As but something they, 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 what they need to do is try to avoid a lawsuits. lawsuits. Yeah, that's, that's exactly probably. why they... They offer it. There's, they'll be, they'll, trust me, there'll be no kid that's going to feel damaged by what they just saw. Well, somebody did. Somebody went home and told their parent and said, hey, uh, this is what's going yeah. on. They probably said to their parents, you're not going to believe what Mr. So-and-so did in class today. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the parents freak out. The kid just you know laughing at it because the kid thinks it's hilarious. They're asking anyone with relevant information about this incident to, uh, to come forward. So... I don't know. If you know anything about it, you should, uh, you should definitely contact the police. Or let me see the video. I want to see Yeah, I want to see it, too. I'd like to critique this man's performance. Sure, why not? You're like uh, like the, the Roger Ebert of, uh, <laughs> of filth. Well, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say it's probably a dumb, stupid video that had connotations to, you know, maybe sexual activity or something like that. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't even worth sharing. Potentially true. Potentially yeah. true. Uh, Governor Healy attended the State Police 89th Recruit Training Troop graduation at the Mass Mutual Center yesterday. Multiple state and city leaders were also there, including an address by Governor Healy, Colonel John Mon Jr., Interim Superintendent of the Mass State Police, Detective Lieutenant Jeffrey Johnson, Commandment of the uh, Massachusetts State Police Academy, and State Representative Carlos Gonzalez of Springfield, a House Chairperson on the Joint Committee of Public Safety. A total of 75 new troopers were sworn in after completing six months of training in New Braintree. Of the graduates, 68 are men, 7 are women, and 14 members have served their country in the armed forces. People are uh, poured into the Mass Mutual Center to show their support for the latest batch of recruits graduating from the Mass State Police. Munson uh, resident Steve Rickson and his uh, wife came to support their niece, Rebecca, who say they will be a standout trooper. She's also a great singer. Trooper Rebecca Rickson sang the national anthem. How about that? How about that? Uh, and yeah, they they had a nice time there. Who won the driveway in the snow? And then the, the snowblower. Snow I don't know. <laughs> I think I think it was some sort of a raffle. All right, and the valedictorian of the class of 2024 gets a brand new driveway. Would it be crazy if you found out like the 50-50 raffle uh, represented at least five hours of overtime pay? Yeah. yeah well. Five hours that you didn't even have to show up. For. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you want to be a steady, you got to know how it operates. Yeah, you got to you got to know how to play the game. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're not. Uh, they, man, I don't know if they teach you that stuff in the uh, in the state police academy. Well, how to uh, 
get free stuff. How to get free? Yes, right. How to how to uh, manipulate the system for your own good? Actually, that's how they recruited them. They're like, hey, who wants to be part of the Massachusetts sweepstakes? <laughs> As a state cop, you have struck the jackpot. Yeah, Ed Mc, Ed, the, the, like a like a uh, like a uh, AI image of Ed McMahon. There, you could be the next winner of a brand new driveway <laughs> from the publisher's clearinghouse. The uh, mother of a high school cheerleader in Michigan is upset because the school told her daughter to quote cover up while she was wearing her official cheerleading uniform. It wasn't during a game. It wasn't during school. But at the girls. Uh, School, it's common for athletes to be asked to wear uniforms to school on game days. And the girls' cheerleading coach told the cheerleaders to wear theirs. The mother says her daughter was told she needed to go put some pants on because if she didn't cover up, it's a distraction to the boys. The mom wants to know, if the uniform is appropriate to wear at games, why wouldn't it be appropriate to wear at the school? She's got a really good point. Really good point. The uh, school says it's no big deal. They released a statement saying athletic uniforms may not meet school dress code requirements. <laughs> that is the this is the case for the length of the cheerleading skirts. You are you are completely contradicting yourself. Yeah. By telling these girls they can wear short skirts during a cheerleading competition, but they're not allowed to wear them in school. You know what? It, it, it is really hard to argue with that because you're right. Why would why would a, a football or basketball game be appropriate, but an algebra class would not? I don't know. It makes no sense. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, this lady should sue. Mm-hmm. I would sue. Oh, I'd sue also. I'm waiting for a good lawsuit to come along. You, know, I'm not particularly. That's, that's my retirement plan. I'm yeah, gonna, that's I'm a good one. Wind up uh, getting. Uh, su- Sue a big business. I'm not particularly uh, litigious, but if I had the opportunity to, you know, to to crack the bank with a lawsuit, yeah, I would do it in a heartbeat. Absolutely, yes. And a school district uh, is no exception to that. Well, I want to. I'd want to go a little bit deeper than that. I mean, I'd want to, you know, knock over like a Fortune 500 company with a good set of lawyers. Yeah, school districts got a good insurance plan too. They do, at but least squeeze a couple of million out of that. I know, but if I could find a way to like sue. Uh, Google or Apple because I've been damaged by their products, man, I'll tell you what, that would be fantastic. Yeah, that's a good retirement plan, I'm telling you. The bottomless well of, of potential uh, your, your, your lawsuit settlements. I've been trying to sue this place for years. You get, no, you get nothing out of that. No. No, you get nothing. You get, what are you going to get? Free T-shirts and you well, know, t- tickets to the camping and outdoor show? Uh, I, don't think that's, I don't think that's what you want. That, well, you know, I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to sue you for every Deerfield craft fair ticket you got in that <laughs> prize box. Don't I make me come you, after you. I think you, can, I think you can find other things to sue for. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like... You like sue like a I don't know uh, you like a uh, Tesla sue Elon Musk that guy has been screwing you forever I have I don't own a Tesla he's not doesn't matter screwing me I, let's I, just say, I, I don't okay have let, to do with the guy well let's say that you've got uh, like a like a weird aversion to rockets yeah. and you want to sue him for his whole SpaceX program because it's emotionally damaging to you. Yes, it is emotional. This guy's got a couple billion dollars stacked away. That's the guy you want to go for. You know, you want to go with this company. I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, somebody sent me a picture this morning um, of amazing shots of space. He's SpaceX. Is he SpaceX or is that the other guy? I think he's SpaceX. He's SpaceX. What's the Jeff Bezos one? Maybe that's SpaceX. I don't, I don't know. even know. Well, they're showing the uh, SpaceX amazing shots of the SpaceX launching another uh, satellite into space, and it looks, looks like a big, giant, fiery penis in mm-hmm. the sky. That's right. How and can you sue a guy like that? And you haven't been able to sleep because of these images of the fiery, burning penis. No, I hold a lot of respect for the man that he can put a fiery penis in the sky. No, no, no. You don't want to go that way. No. You've been emotionally damaged, Steve. You haven't slept in weeks. Yeah, you're right. I haven't slept Now's the weeks. time to contact Insomnia. an attorney. Contact an attorney and say, listen, I want to sue Elon Musk because I'm now damaged goods thanks to him. Do you think uh, Elon Musk would choke on a sandwich if you mentioned the name Mark E. Salamone to him? Without question. Say, Without we'll, question. We'll settle. We'll settle. Well, they've just 
Mr. Nagel has just hired the law firm of Mark E. Salamon. Oh, Mark E. Salamon. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm choking on my sandwich. I can't believe you use those blasphemous words in this office. <laughs> And then, and then you have uh, you know Elon Musk you know, standing up around the conference table. Settle, and then you're done. Uh, I and then you get to, you get a big stack of cash. I always wanted to be part of one of those commercials. That would have been fun. I would be. Fun. I would be the guy eating the sandwich and choking on it just to get the free sandwich. Yeah, choking man number two. That's the guy I want to play. Yes. yes yeah. Sandwich choker. Like like we're like we're all choking because Marky <laughs> Salomon is representing the <laughs> other side. <laughs> Your Pioneer Valley forecast today is going to be uh, uh, sunny but windy and a high of 36 tomorrow. Sunny with a high of 34. It is 34 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel. Oh, wait a second. There's a four or five car pile up on I-91 South right past Northampton. Oh, okay. So I don't have any other details of that other than the uh, Route 10 tire listener line. You can text at 413-293-1021. Uh, but that is a developing situation here. And that's the news on Rock 102. Oh, yeah. Boston just bur- Rock 102, Springfield's Classic Rock. It's 757 and Def Leppard with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Uh, it is going to be windy today with a high of 36. Tomorrow, uh, more of the same with a high of 34. It is 34 right now in downtown Springfield. So uh, after 8 o'clock, we will, uh, we will conduct another round of Open Line Friday. I'm yeah. going to tell you now, I don't want to hear any foul language. I don't want to hear any of your uh, unnecessary hate speech. And if you can try not to sound like a blithering idiot and uh, just let us take care of that part of the uh, the show, then that would be terrific. Yes. Yes, All right? it would be. Hey, uh, I we don't have much time here, but if you left us a box of donut dip, can you just identify who you are? Because, you know, we are kind of like little fat kids that will eat those donuts, but if they're uh, laced with something. Like uh, anthrax. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, they never found that one guy. Let us know if you were the one. Uh, on the on the Route 10 Tire listener line at 413-293-1021, you can just text it and say, yeah, that was me. Yeah, because, and, and, uh, and they're untainted. It's unnerving uh, when you have a box of food just sitting there. Especially outside. something as delicious as a like a box of donut dip. I know. I You can't let that stuff go to waste. And, no, and if we don't know who it's from, uh, I, I, I don't. Know. Not that donut dip would have anything bad to do with it. I'm just saying, who you know, the delivery. It's like that. It's like that the Uber Eats guy. Yeah, it's like a lot of things can happen from West Springfield to East Lamino. How do we know you didn't put your fingers all over the donuts before you br- brought it to us? Exactly my point. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, it's uh, 7:59. Rock 102. 102 Springfield's classic rock. It's 8:13 and White Snake. With Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Windy with a high of 36 today. Tomorrow, uh, more of the same with a high of 34. It's 33 right now in downtown Springfield. Traffic alert. Road hog. Four car wreck on 991 southbound at mile marker 21. That's, I uh, believe, just after Northampton. Uh, nothing serious, uh, so it shouldn't be too bad of a backup, but that's what's going on. All right. Good enough. You ready? Mm-hmm. You ready? Mm-hmm. All right. And now, live from the Richard Grieco Studios in East Long Meadow, Massachusetts, it's Open, Open Live Friday! Friday. All right. Ba-ba-da. Listen, I wasn't satisfied with everybody last week or the week before, so let's make something of this. 293-1021, that is the uh, Route 10 Tire listener line. Yeah. And uh, no filthy language, no hate speech. Try not to act like a blithering idiot. I know that's a lot to ask. We'll see how it goes. You can't trust people with that kind of instruction. I know. Uh, Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? Is this the lovely Back to the Nagel show? Hey, is this the lovely Hawkman from where? Uh, Mr. Nagel, I'm not speaking to you, but is Mr. Bax there? Uh, yeah, why are you not speaking to, to Steve, Steve? Well, the, something to do with Sunday, which I can't talk about on the radio. I don't want to get someone in trouble, but Bax, I want to wish you and Jenny a lovely, wonderful anniversary today. Oh, thank you, uh, the Hawkman. I appreciate that. And you two have a wonderful weekend, and... Mr. Nagel, I will speak to you sometime this weekend, sir. I'm sorry, uh, my headphones are disabled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why. That's why you're not 
Yeah. You know, doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah, like yeah. disabled people. Oh, yeah, there, there you go. go. Yeah, there you That's go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. I'll let Jenny know. Have a good weekend. All right. Bye-bye, guys. All right. There you go. <laughs> Rock 102. Good morning. Is this? Oh, I love Monday because I got your show to look forward to. It's educational. It's comical. And it's great music. Keep up the great work, guys. Is this Dale, the brain injury guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We there you go. Well, well thank you, Dale. We appreciate it. I'm glad you're listening. Yep, yep, for sure. Bye-bye. All all right, right, see, look, we're go. getting them all checked in this morning. <laughs> Rock 102, good morning. Is this? Oh, I love that. Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? Hi, my name's Braden. Hey, Braden. It's uh, Bax and Nagel. What can we do for you? Yo, so I got a little bit of a joke for you guys, all right? I'm going to try to keep it as clean as possible. Oh, good. All right, so it's called the Pickle Barrel. I'm not sure if you guys have heard about it, but uh, it goes a little something like this. So these guys in the Navy, um, he's a little new, so he gets on the ship, kind of exploring, figuring it out. A couple months go by. He's worrying about his, you know, his pleasure cycle. You know, he wants to figure himself out. So he goes up to his, uh, his higher rank, and uh, he asks him, he goes, well, how do, you, how do you do this? How do you get by, you know, all these, you know, these months aboard? He goes, well, there's this pickle barrel. You know, if you go up to it and do your thing, you know, it'll take care of you. And so, you know, a couple of weeks go by, you know, he's doing it. He's having fun. And uh, basically, he goes up to the lieutenant, and he's like, man, ever since you gave me that advice, you know, it's been great. It's great. And he's like, well, I'm glad you like it because uh, tomorrow's your day in the pickle barrel. Ah, you see? <laughs> I don't understand that. Now at that's all. a seaman swabbing the poop deck. Oh, if I do anything, I'm talking about it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, don't make it worse. Yeah. Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? Nagel! What's up? Nagel, they, pick, they picked me up, man. We're on our way to Florida. No, it's, uh, oh, it's Dave from Huntington on his way to Florida. Wow. Yeah. No better day than to head out to Florida. It's like 55 mile an hour winds up here and 10 below, two feet of snow both ways. All right. Well, you have a safe trip. All right, Nagel. All right. All right. There you Thanks. go. Okay. Rock right. 102. Good morning. Who's this? Hi. Good morning. This is Debbie. Hey, Hi, Debbie. Debbie. Hey. How are you guys? Uh, very good. What can we do for you today? Well, just wondering, are you guys going to the Springfield RV Camping and Outdoor Show this weekend? Uh, Believe it or not, there is a possibility we may wind up going. Yeah. All right. Well, we're hoping that everybody comes down. It's going to be a great weekend for the show. Are you uh, are you uh, in charge of it or are you presenting there or something? We are, my husband and I, Jody, are in charge of the show this year, putting it on with our volunteer group and our camping club. Shut the, the front door. Well, All right. Our very own Pat Kelly will be out there broadcasting live this afternoon. That's right. We can't wait to have them again this year. Now, do you have any campers that fit a little guy like that? <laughs> a mini oh, camper? we do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we do. We have all kinds of campers. It's amazing what they have and what can come in a little box or a big tag-along. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. what I'm talking about. All right. Well, yeah, there's a good possibility that uh, we may see you this weekend. All right. Well, we'll look for you. Okay. All right. Great one. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Yeah, all right. There you go. Uh, Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, this is Julie from uh, from from Springfield. How are you? Good, Julie. What's up? Okay, I have a joke for you. Oh, by the way, Bax, happy anniversary. No, thank you, and Julie. I think you guys are you guys are hilarious. But I have a joke. Okay. All wait, right. Wait. So him and his wife are hilarious, or me and him are hilarious? Yeah, you, you, yeah, you, you and you and Bax are hilarious. Oh. I love you guys. I listen to you every morning. Because his right. wife's pretty uh, funny. Yeah, too. actually, Jenny's very, very funny. All right, go on. Yeah, I bet she is. To be married to you, <laughs> kidding. Okay, so. There's an elderly woman walking down the street, and she's dragging two big black trash bags behind her. This cop is watching her, and every couple steps, the black trash bag on her left, behind her left leg, out comes a $20 bill every couple steps. So the cop pulls up, and he goes, ma'am, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but um, every couple steps, that trash bag on the left, a $20 bill comes out of it. You didn't happen to rob a bank, did you? She said, absolutely not. I live next door to a football stadium, and every Sunday... Men feel the need to put their privates through my fence and try to urinate in my garden. So I grab my gardening shears and I put it around their privates and I say twenty dollars or I take it off. And the cop says, "Okay, fair enough." He says he starts scratching his head. He goes, 
well, what's in the other trash bag? She says, well, you know, not everybody pays. <laughs> Hey! That's a good one. I like yeah, that one. I like that one. <laughs> you guys have a great day. You're you awesome. Too. You guys make my morning every morning. Thanks, Julie. Right. Thank you, Julie. See, that's a good joke. Yeah, it's a bag full of, you know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? You talking to me? Hey! hey! Now we're talking. What's going on? Hey, it's George from Agawam. Hey, uh, can I get a couple of shout outs, you know, to. My Howell Sheeney Tech uh, graduates, 1985, all my friends out there, you know, my uh, my boss, Mike, and, uh, you know, my, my co-worker, Zach, you know, just, just a couple of shout-outs. And, They're all working oh at God. Plimpton, aren't they? <laughs> oh, my God. How do you guys, how do you guys allow... Well, listeners, to do that. That's well, so dude, you know, we just picked up your phone call randomly, so you're kind of in that too. Yeah. So it's it's a, if, if it's oh, open I'm lines, like, it means everybody's oh, involved. Right. Yeah. So so you oh, did that's, it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So if I'm here and you're there, isn't it our show? Oh. For the I... for the very brief moments that I'm going to continue to talk to you on the phone, yes, you're absolutely right. Oh. Hey guys, uh, have a great day. I love. Love listening to you every morning. All right, great. Well, thank you very much. Love talking to you, too. All right, bye. All right, there you go. Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? Hey, it's Antoine again from Connecticut. What's up? Hey, I got a question uh, about mixed signals from women. About what? About what? Uh, I've been dating, uh, uh, like getting mixed signals. Okay. So I was dating this. Uh, I'm dating this uh, older older lady. Uh, are you the same guy from last week? Looking. You know, we had a great date. Wait, are you the same guy from yeah, last week with the older brother? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. different girl now. Okay, different girl. a different girl. Oh, a oh, different one. Oh, okay, all right. You yeah. like the old all ones. Right. All right, go yeah. for it. Yeah. So uh, she's beautiful and all that. Uh, but we go on a date. Great night out. We get a little little buzz on. Comes back to my place. Get back in my bed. She strips down, everything like that, start cuddling, you know, but then nothing. N- nothing. Is that like a mixed signal or just like, you know? Uh, it, you know, dude, I, I don't even know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we can resolve but, your how, relationship how, problems on the phone here. How, how old is this one? She's uh, like 44. Oh, that's not okay. too Okay, and, and you're, and, what, and you're how old? old? No, I'm 37. 37. That's, that's, that's not, that's not, that's not too Come on, bad. please. Yeah. That's not an older woman. Well, at you're, least you're getting closer. No, no. Last year, it was like a 20-year age difference yeah. you had there. Yeah, that was good, too. That was good, too. Yeah, that was yeah. good. One. All right, well, listen. Yeah, uh, I was wondering, like, uh, <laughs> it doesn't change, though, huh? I, 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 listen, just by the way you're talking, I'm surprised a woman even actually came home into your bedroom. I'm surprised you yeah, should so be lucky. Uh, that's you can barely on. find someone your own age. <laughs> yeah. All right, listen, we got other other people calling. <laughs> All right. All right, yeah, have a good day. We actually had nobody calling. I just didn't want to end. Oh, just want to end. <laughs> Rock 102, good morning. Who's this? Yeah, um, Nate Dog from Central Connecticut. Yes, Nate Dog. What can we do for you? I uh, just wanted to share a clean joke. Okay. okay. Go on. All right. Okay. Well, All right. Okay. Uh, okay. I, what is the, the instruction of people not listening to what the well, instructions are? Here's a little, uh, a little, uh, little primer in being on a phone. When someone asks you a question, yeah, you should acknowledge with a response. It's not a complicated thing. No, it's really not. All right, let's try this again. Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, good morning, guys. It's Vince the Plumber. Oh, oh, God. So why did we have to take one more call? <laughs> Dude, today is awesome. This is great, guys. I mean, the kid, so that kid, 37, trying to hook up with older ladies. I, I love that kid. Now I've actually heard it all because I thought only women had daddy issues. Now guys have mommy issues. I mean, this kid, this is awesome. This is awesome. And then the other guy wanted to do shout outs. It's like, dude, hey, just do the shout outs, man. Like me right now. I'm going to shout out to my boys at Plimpton and Hills, <laughs> my other plumber buddies, <laughs> the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Yeah. And then a big one, a, a big one because of my, my buddy at work. He was like, dude, you haven't even said my name out there. I'm like, okay, his name is John Adam. We work together. He wanted me to do a big shout out to him. Hey, Johnny, what's up, buddy? 
I'm saying what's up. I hope you're listening this time. I feel embarrassed for him. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But he doesn't work at Plimpton, so he should All be right. okay. We're, All we're right. okay. All right. All right. Well, listen, you guys, <laughs> have a- you, you have a great weekend. You guys too, man. Later. All right. There you go. One, one, one more. Yeah, one more. Sure yeah, yeah. Okay. Come on. We All got right. it. Uh, Rock 102. Good morning. Who's this? Hey, this is Ron, man. Hey, I love listening to you guys' show, but I just got to say, are most of these callers calling in in the morning higher than a kite or what? I can't understand half these <laughs> people. <laughs> I believe we we kind of influence people to start uh, either drinking oh. or uh, smoking uh, oh my the devil's God. lettuce very I early. Way, I love the way you get that pause, and all of a sudden you hear them talk, and you're like, wait a minute, are they actually there? <laughs> all right. But anyway, well, love your show, guys. Love listening to it. Keep well, up the good work. Thank right. you. We appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for calling. Okay, there we go. Well, no. it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't the worst. It wasn't the best either. No. <laughs> No, it was not. Shoutouts left and right this morning. Day 26 of Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Ladies and gentlemen, free to children. It's 829 with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Dan Brown's got the forecast because he's the man. Remember I, uh, when, I, when I started that whole thing off by by giving a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of instruction? Yeah. Like, don't say any filthy words. Yeah, no yeah, hate yeah. speech. Don't act like a blithering idiot. Yeah. I know the blithering, uh, <laughs> the blithering idiot part is, is a new uh, attack on to the rule book. But uh, it is every bit as important as uh, no foul language or hate speech. Yeah. And let's try to uh, let's try to correct that for next week. Well, I uh, I did ap- appreciate the lady with the joke there. That was a good joke. I like that. I hadn't heard that joke yet. Yeah, it's a uh, d- a whole bag full of you know what. Yeah, see that's it, yeah. see now that's good. Jo- that's someone who thought ahead. You know how can I make this a great feature for everybody in in the entire listing area I, and then you have uh, another guy who's trying to bed down older ladies uh much to the surprise of everyone who's ever heard him speak by the way i believe a whole bag of those is called a singapore sling <laughs> <laughs> you well, can well, figure out what that means we got news next to rock 102 here's 833 with Bax and Nagel and Rock 102, it's time for news. Brought to you by Gary Rome Hyundai. Technicians get up to a $5,000 sign-in bonus right now. Learn more at GaryRomeHyundai.com slash family. His local radio icon, Steve Nagel. Uh, thanks, Max. In developing news out of Holyoke, Western Mass News has learned that a high school teacher is under investigation after a student reported an inappropriate video linked to the educator. See, Western Mass News has a, a different way of saying things than 22 does. It's a little bit more sensational. It's sensational, and now I'm intrigued. I want to know what the video was. Uh, after receiving numerous tips, Western Mass News spent the past few days getting answers, which included uh, Reagan and Lowry going on the Hello Holyoke uh, forum going, Hey, does anybody have access to this video? <laughs> Did after, anyone respond to her? Yeah, there, there was a lot of people that responded, and even the teacher is named in the in the comments. Uh, but I'm not saying that because it's not part of the news story. After after a letter went out informing parents of a, an inappropriate video shown to students by a Holyoke High School teacher, they received numerous concerns from both parents and others within the Holyoke community. One parent they spoke with told them that her ninth grade daughter showed her the video and called the content very disturbing. Mm. On uh, February second. Ooh, Groundhog Day. A letter was sent out by Principal Lori McKenna addressed to Holyoke High School North families and staff. That reads in part, I'm writing to let you know that we launched an immediate investigation this afternoon after a student notified school administrators they saw an inappropriate video linked to a teacher's Google Classroom space today. We also took immediate steps to prevent further access to the video. We are working in coordination with the Holyoke Public Schools Human Resources Department. Now I want to see the video. See, that when you do something mm-hmm. like that, when you tell somebody don't watch the video, the first thing I want to do is watch the video. I would like to determine whether it's inappropriate or not. Anytime you tell somebody that uh, they shouldn't look at something, yeah, of course they want to look. Of course. Of course. I mean, it happened all the time on the internet. You know, how many reaction videos did you see uh, from that video of those, uh, those two nice girls with that one cup? Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. You tell everybody you're not going to believe this video, and people say, yeah, I really want to see it. And then when they see it, like, why'd you make me watch that? Yeah, why Why did you make me watch that? I just, wanted to, see your, I just wanted to see your reaction. You showed it to me. Well, I, just, I thought it was interesting. I thought you might like it. For those who are... Uh, it, ha- it had a good theme song. 
For those who are unfamiliar, Google Classroom is a free learning platform that is used by schools to allow teachers to create, distribute, and grade assignments. Really? Hmm. It's the first I'm hearing it. That's what schools do? Parents uh, they spoke with told us that's the platform where a Holyoke High School history teacher posted the link to the video. They also said uh, they also say he told students to watch and like it for extra credit. In the video, you can see the teacher acting out a scene where his character is shown talking on the phone with an actress pretending to be an underage girl. Mm. The video description says she's getting calls from adult actors dealing with adult-themed issues, and the common consensus we've seen from parents has been confusion. Ashley Cody, a uh, parent to a Holyoke High School freshman, said uh, it made no sense. And then, even if the that even if he made that video where he called into some kind of acting, why was it an adult dressed as a little girl? And then he's talking about relationship problems. What does this have to do with acting? That's actually a good point. No, I I really don't know. Uh, when uh, Western Mass News reached out to Holyoke Public Schools, they told uh, Western Mass News they couldn't uh, provide any information at the time except for the fact that the teacher is currently on leave pending the outcome of the investigation. However, they spoke with several upspe- upset parents uh, who shared their reactions. And, of course, you know, they do the man-on-the-street interview and uh, the parents are all upset because right. of whatever this video contains. Of course, you know, you'd, you'd almost have to see the video to really judge for yourself whether it's appropriate or, or inappropriate. Kind of like, you know, the same way where, you know, some schools are banning, like, To Kill a Mockingbird or Catcher in the Rye or, you know, Huck Finn for that matter because, you know, because of some of the content in, in those books. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this video is probably a giant piece of crap. It yeah. sounds pretty stupid. Mm-hmm. It sounds like it's uh, not uh, good content to be sharing it in a school this sounds like it sounds like something you'd be sharing with your drinking buddies yeah but i also would like to see the video myself to to make an accurate judgment and uh i can be the I, did you call I, me the robert uh or roger uh the roger ebert roger ebert yeah of, of filth of filthy videos yeah i'll be your gene siskel if it uh, makes you feel any better i'd be more like the cy becker of uh of uh, yeah, that's respectful. Yeah. 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 Why not? God rest his soul. Yeah. I give this one star. <laughs> Let's take another look at the inappropriate movie. Let's take a look at the boobies <laughs> on the inappropriate videos. <laughs> We're only doing this because we love Cy. We Becker, love Cy that, Becker. And uh, rest in peace. God rest his soul. That's right. That, uh, that man. Um, but... Uh, Stop! Uh, stop! Stop doing stuff with kids. What, 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 do people just not think? They just don't think. I'm you know guessing what, you, this you guy know, wanted clout yeah. for his video. You know what it is. You know what it is. People do things on social media, mm-hmm. the TikToks, uh, the Instagrams, the YouTubes, and they think there's no ramifications for anything they do. All that bad stuff about being canceled, that could never happen to me. I'm a teacher. I'm, I'm an educator. I'm an I'm a history teacher with uh I've dabbled in acting. Yes. Check out my crappy video. Yes, and the the problem is when people see what he's dabbled in, then all of a sudden they want him bounced. I wonder if it's like hey, hey kids, you think that was funny? Do you think I really got it? You think I really get somewhere hey, with this? Rather than teach you actual history today, I want to show everybody here the video I did on TikTok. And then all of a sudden, he shows the video on TikTok, and ba boom, he blowed himself up and has been canceled. Uh, you want to go with, uh, down to Connecticut and talk about their problems down there? Sure. Uh, let's see. Oh, I, this was the, this was the uh, the story I was telling you. This isn't out of Connecticut, but it's out of Arizona. A woman who became famous in 2015 for falsely claiming to be black has now lost her current job because of her OnlyFans account. Uh, Nikichi Diallo, whose former name is Rachel Dolzal, was uh, recently an aftercare instructor for the Catalina Foothills School District in Tucson. The school district confirmed that Diallo was fired on Tuesday after they learned of her public social media post promoting her OnlyFans content. The school district said in a statement in part, her posts are contrary to our district's use of social media by district employees policy and our staff ethics policy. She is no longer employed by the Catalina Foothills School District. According to The Guardian, Diallo is best known for falsely identifying as a black woman for years and even heading the uh, Spokane, Washington chapter of the NAACP before her parents publicly revealed, yes, she's actually white. 
Do we know what kind of uh, content she was doing on OnlyFans? Uh, she was uh, posting, uh, you know, nude pictures and all different kinds of positions. They were provocative peekaboo shots. Provocative shots. Remember the remember the hairy one uh, from Longmeadow here? <laughs> yes, yes, the woman who was uh, could have used a trim. Yeah, but that was the hook. She was doing that for yeah. dudes who was into hair. Okay. And it uh, looked like she had a snuffle off, I guess, uh, you know, in some of those shots that we saw. See, no, no but this, the thing. Oh, I, no. I know. But the thing, I, I, again, I haven't really been on OnlyFans, mostly because yeah. I'm too cheap to buy into it. Yeah. Um, but uh, my understanding is it's not all adult content. So I'm just wondering if. If uh, if it was adult content that she was doing, or whether she was you know, you got some other kind of thing going on there. Listen, uh, regular social media wouldn't get you banned from a from a school. I'm True. sure they have a social media policy. The teachers are allowed to have social media accounts. There are certain things they're not allowed to put up. Yeah, but only, but only fans. Your reputation is that it's primarily you know pornographic, uh, you know sexually provocative stuff. Yeah, yeah, but maybe she was, uh, you know, giving like a, I don't know, I don't, I don't know, uh, like arts and craft uh, projects. I don't think she was doing that. You don't? No. no. I don't know. Unless it included body painting, maybe that was the yeah, arts and crafts that would be interesting. Uh, th that would go through that. But uh, this woman is really smart because now she's brought attention to that she has an OnlyFans account, and uh, mm. there's a lot of people out there that feel bad for people who lose their jobs because of. The fact that they have an OnlyFans account, and uh, she was already infamous to begin with, so that's going to make her even. Yeah. Uh, people want to see that stuff. Yeah, but you know what? I think between this and that whole thing uh, when she was uh, working for the uh, NAACP, that uh, maybe this might have uh, stained her reputation a bit. Perhaps. Maybe the people start uh, looking at her a little. Uh, uh, a little differently now. Yeah, how's she going to recover from this one? I don't know. I'm su I'm surprised she recovered from the last one. Around 10,000 drivers illegally passed school buses during the first six months of the school year, according to a report from Connecticut's largest city. Bridgeport's school bus camera safety program reported that 9,860 vehicles illegally passed school buses where children, while children were being picked up or dropped off. See, I always thought they were just suggestions. No, no, they're not just suggestions. It's a... Uh... It's more than that. Like a decoration. Like it's not, you know, a stop sign is usually a, like at a, at an intersection. A stop sign on a bus doesn't mean stop. No, that's, mean that stop. is, that means stop. City officials said the evidence captured on camera demonstrated an ongoing public safety threat that students face on their journey to and from the classroom. The safety of our children is a top priority of mine, said Mayor Joe Ganim. It is unacceptable that there are motorists who blatantly put our children in danger by illegally passing stopped school buses. Uh, Bronny Chamberlain is a spokesperson for DATCO, the bus company that serves more than 20 in cities and towns in Connecticut. He said that illegally passing stopped school buses has become a common occurrence. I wonder why, though. Is it people not paying attention or people just not giving an F? Uh, I think I and it's probably a little bit of both. I'm some guessing, people some people don't care, and then some people you know aren't paying attention to the fact that the sign is out. I'm guessing it's the texting and the dr distracted driving that's causing a lot of that. That's probably a lot, that's an, that's a huge number. Yeah, and Even, you know what? You got to stop on both sides of the road. And I didn't realize Bridgeport was Connecticut's largest city. I thought Summers was. That's uh, that's how no, uh, I was, un, 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 undialed in I am to I Connecticut. Thought, oh, really? I thought it was Bark Barkhamstead. Barkhamstead. How do you say that? Barkhamstead. Is it Barkhamstead or Bark Barkhamstead? Right. When you go when you when you go uh, when you go out to breakfast, you get ham and eggs. No, you get ham and eggs. So pronounce the H like a man, and be and be done with it. Yes, but uh, when a dog uh, barks, doesn't he bark him? No. You don't know? No. What are you, what are you, what are you, crazy? Are you out of your mind? Yes, I am out of my mind. You know what it is? It's Friday, and I just want to get out of here. Yeah, me too. I'm kind of, you know, I'm between that and 
rip it into those box of potentially tainted donut dip donuts. I, I don't know. know what I'm going to do. Yeah, no, we don't know who the mystery one uh, was that dropped off the donut dip donuts for us this morning. Yeah, we, no one's fessing up. We thank you for the delicious deliciousness or poison that is in those donuts. Yeah, we don't know who was. We don't know if you're on the up and up or, or what. It's going to be sunny today and windy with a high of 37. Tomorrow, uh, more of the same with a high of 34. It's 33 right now in downtown Springfield. I'm Steve Nagel, and that's the news on Rock 102. Ah, yeah. Boston just birthed the biggest man-boy band of now time. Two in Nirvana with Bax and Nagel on Rock 102. Sunny and windy today with a high of 37. Tomorrow, more of the same with a high of 34. It's 33 right now in downtown Springfield. It's a uh, shop Friday this morning at 9 o'clock. If you go to rock102.com, you can save 30% off to Fletcher's Barbecue in Longmeadow. Honoring the uniquely American tradition of pit smoked barbecue. Served up uh, southern classics and international flavors alike with 14 beers on tap, a cozy upscale atmosphere, and a cocktail wine and whiskey list to match. And, of course, there's all that delicious barbecue. It's uh, That starts at 9 o'clock this morning at the Shop 30 store at rock102.com. Don't miss out. 30% off at Fletcher's in Longmeadow. Good place. I kind of just want to go in there sometimes and just order a big hot bowl of those grits. Man, they were good. The, yeah, the grits are good. And That's, I never really liked grits until I had them. It's it's all in the way it's prepared. It really totally. is. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, grits are uh, delicious. What is cream of wheat? What is that? Is that like a It's it's yeah, it's kind of like a like a like a like a milled It it's basically oat? it's it's basically be like a, a milled wheat broken down kind of the way like polenta, which is corn. All right. I don't know if I like the cream of wheat. I said I didn't, uh, I didn't really mind the cream of wheat. And actually, if you put the like the all that that all that butter and uh, cheese inside the cream of wheat, yeah, it's delicious. Yeah, you know what? You're, go get the deal on the shop thirty th- store. It, yeah, it's totally worth it. It's but, totally worth going to to Fletcher's. To, the moist to the brisket food. and uh, and uh, and the polenta. No, that's not polenta. Well, yeah. you mean the grits? Yeah. Oh my God, so good. I never never really discovered food. Like it could, like all the different kinds of foods uh, that you could be made until I was like an adult. Oh yeah, you know, well, growing the- up, my dad, you know, it was it was very you know regimented, very you know, it was pasta, a lot of pastas, a lot of meats, a lot of you know things like that that well, were, were basic. You know, back in the day, yeah. you know, people didn't really have much to choose from. Yeah, you know, whether it's based on the money or you know the kinds of things that were in grocery stores, everything was like kind of like meat and potatoes, and that was yeah. pretty much it. Yeah, but I know a lot of people that are afraid to at least try new foods because, you know, well, what happens if I don't like it? Well, you just finish it and don't eat any more of it. That's I, that's it. But just, like people are afraid of it. Like it's like for, like somehow like something you you're not aware of could be evil. Yeah, I we used to be subjected to horrible meals. Liv- oh yeah, liver and onions. You don't like liver and onions. No, there's something about that film that's on the outside of the liver that yeah. uh, doesn't taste very good. So I don't, uh, I, I wouldn't like go out of my way to get liver. Yeah, but I don't really mind it when I'm eating it. Or Stouffer's cream chipped beef. Oh yeah, that's not that's not right. That was gross. Yeah, that's basically and, you telling your family we don't love you. And I don't even know what kind of beef is that. What kind? What is chipped beef? Is it just like it, it's kind of like a like a dry, it's kind of like a very thinly sliced but kind of dry beef. Yeah, like almost like a salami or a prosciutto type of type of yeah, meat, but, but without not, but without all the deliciousness that those things provide. Yeah, and uh, he used to call it the S on the shingle. Yeah, that's that's, that's how we you know. Funny thing is, you know, as uh, as gross as the chipped beef can yeah. be, it's not. That far away from like uh, you know biscuits, biscuits and, and gravy, gravy right, which I right. love. I love that too. But there's something about the frozen box of the Stouffer's cream chip beef that gives yeah. me like I have PTSD <laughs> from that. So, is the you, from like from like looking at like the uh, the frozen block? Well, yeah, we didn't have gravy, and we didn't have a microwave. You you put the whole bag into a boiling pot of water and mm. let it uh, boil for like twenty twenty five minutes. And then he would take it out and put it on burnt toast. And the only reason the toast was burnt because he was too drunk and he put the setting on the wrong uh, thing. Ah, you'll eat it anyway. You scrape off the stuff off the top. 
<laughs> Man, drunken yeah. meals with dad. Yeah, those, I should, I, good I, times. I gotta have a whole recipe book full of this yeah. Follow stuff. me for more recipes. Yeah, he, he we once he once cooked okra. <laughs> Now, have you ever had okra? <laughs> yeah. 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 You know it looks like snot bubbles inside yeah, of slimy. okra? But you're supposed to cook it. Yes, that's right. And then he uh, he was like all excited one day. I got some fresh okra from the grocery store. You know what he used to it, it, Let me just uh, paint a picture of the afternoon of what he used to do on a <laughs> Sunday. Remember Jimmy's Cocktails over in 16 Acres? It's now yeah, a, it's now yeah. a big it's now one of those big Y uh, market yes. things now. Right. Jimmy's cocktails used to be he used to go to the big Y next to the Jimmy's cocktails. Okay. But he would do that last. He would go and sit at Jimmy's cocktails for like three or four hours, get nice and oiled up, go buy like three things at the <laughs> grocery store, and then come home and go. You should have seen the line on a <laughs> Sunday afternoon over at the big Y. <laughs> but he he took this okra and he and he yeah. cut up the okra and it was he didn't even cook it. I I don't even know what the hell I was eating. It, like he was trying to introduce me to new foods by ruining by it. ruining it completely. <laughs> it wasn't until I went to New Orleans many years later yeah. and had like good fried okra. You realize oh like, this is delicious. This doesn't taste anything like the <laughs> snot bucket that he was cooking on the stove that night. <laughs> Hey, you can uh, see, you can see where I, you can see where I get my edge from. So such yeah. beautiful memories. Yeah. It's eight fifty eight. Rock one hundred two. 